Hello, welcome to the Reykjavik Newscast. My name is Josie Ann Gatins. I'm a journalist with the Reykjavik Grapevine and we're here at Neutelsvik. It's a beach uh, in the city of Reykjavik. This, uh, all of the sand that you can see was actually imported into Iceland for people to play on and it's like very mixed weather at the moment. You'll see that there's people sunbathing. I'm in there uh, still in kind of winter clothes. We're having yeah, kind of, kind of really mixed, cool weather, some sun, some wind. Um, we've got lots of news to tell you, but first of all, I just want to mention that we have a sale on cosmetics in our shop at the moment. Um, in particular, uh, there's a company that I really love called Fisher. That's where I get my perfume and some of their products are in the sale. So I really recommend going and checking it out. Maybe we'll have something to show you for the next newscast, but you can find all of it on our website, which is shop.grapevine.is. And the links for all of that are in the description. Like I said, lots of news to get to, so uh, let's stop dilly-dallying on the beach and get to it. So, it's a uh, high tourist season in Iceland, which is something that we haven't really had for the last couple of years. And uh, numbers have reflected the change in, in circumstances. So 176,000 foreign pass passengers departed from Keplavik Airport, which is our uh, main international airport, um, last month, so in June, which is a major increase, of course, from the last two years. This makes 2022 the fifth most popular June on record for travellers and uh, since the beginning of the year 636,000 foreign passengers have departed Iceland. So obviously this is a stark increase on the last couple of years where you know the pandemic has meant that air travel has been disrupted worldwide. Um, 75,000 foreign passengers depart uh, were the had whoa, 75,000 foreign passengers had departed by this time last year. So you can see there's been a really dramatic increase uh, in this time. However, this is still well below the 1 million foreign passenger departures recorded at this time in 2018. So although tourism is rapidly increasing and returning towards pre-pandemic figures, it's not quite at that level yet, although it, it is expected to. And um, you can really feel the difference it's quite quiet down here midweek, of course, but um, downtown on Leugavegur and in kind of popular tourist areas, you can really feel that there's, there's a lot more people back in the city again. Um, about 53,000 foreign tourists in June were from the United States, uh, making up 30% of the total, and Germans came in second place with 21,000 tourists, 12% of the tourists, 12% uh, of the total. So, yeah, you can hear a lot of um, different voices on the street again. It's really exciting. It feels like things are picking up and it's, and it's really busy. Um, but this also comes at a time where, in general, there is an air travel crisis. And I'm sure wherever you are in the world, you'll have heard about this. It's affecting uh, the international travel market. So, uh, generally, airports and airlines have been struggling to keep up with the rapid increase in demand post-Covid. And this is to do with, uh, for, for a number of factors, um, but there's also a situation within this where a lot of staff for uh, airlines and airports had been laid off during the pandemic, or uh, they were forced to take uh, pay freezes or um, even uh, pay deductions in order to protect uh, their jobs and now that things are returning to how they were um, staff have been striking in some of these industries uh, in order to ask for their their rightful money back especially in terms of the um, crisis in terms of uh, uh, cost of living uh, which is happening again across the world because of the war in Ukraine and fuel prices and so on so um, as a result of this, Icelandair's information officer, Austis Ir Pietersdottir, 
has said that the airline has been doing all that it can to minimise delays to its flights from struggling airports. And this has included crew members, um, including pilots, have been loading air airplanes uh, and doing the luggage loading themselves of their own initiative. Um, and they have also sent their own baggage handlers to assist at Amsterdam Schiphol, which is an airport that's, uh, if you've seen in the news, struggling particularly badly because of uh, delays and air uh, baggage handlers have a, a staff shortages. And Austria says, however, that they're not saying to people to not book luggage, but rather just to turn up to the airport ahead of time and make sure that you um, give yourself plenty of time for all of this to happen. So we're actually outside the uh, domestic airport now. So, uh, although this is not where the main international flights come in, it's uh, an airport that's right downtown, and if you're flying to um, to places within Iceland, uh, in the West Fjords or, or so on, then you might be taking a plane from here. And it's also where some planes would depart to Greenland, and Air Greenland has been in the news recently as well. Um, you can kind of sense a theme with the news this week, it's all kind of travel related. But Air Greenland has been forced to cancel flights um, until the end of this month. It's closed all ticket sales uh, to any flights on the west coast of Greenland. And that's actually due to the weather. Although the weather seems pretty fine here at the moment, the west coast of Greenland has been uh, basically full of uh, low cloud and fog. And uh, conditions are not expected to get better until after the end of July. So cancellations yesterday meant that around a thousand people were stranded in Greenland. Um, and so as a result, the airline feels that it's forced to essentially uh, stop ticket sales until the weather conditions improve. Um, this does not affect flights to the east coast, which are still running as planned. Um, but it comes after a particularly bad situation last month. On the 21st of June, a flight from Copenhagen to Greenland was unable to land and after circling for 35 minutes, it was forced to head to Keplavik Airport here in Iceland to refuel before making the journey back to Copenhagen. So it was essentially a 10 hour flight to nowhere. I hope you can still hear us over the sound of these planes. But in some more positive travel and air travel news, um, Iceland's first ever all-electric aeroplane flew over the Hekla air show in South Iceland on Friday. You'll remember Hekla if you were watching our newscast last week. We were actually there for a horse show. Um, and in the same area, they, have, uh, they actually have quite a few different shows. They have a, a, a truck show there as well, I think, sometimes. But they have this air show. Unfortunately, uh, the ba bad weather last Friday meant that the entire rest of the air show programme was cancelled, but they still flew the electric plane nonetheless, and it's reassuring to know that it can fly in poor weather conditions. Um, this is just a very, this is a very small uh, plane. It's a two-seater Pipistrel aircraft. Um, and th the goal of this project and this, this kind of first um, aircraft, this pilot project, you could say, uh, is essentially to take the initiative as aviation begins its energy transition. It's to train staff to be able to fly these uh, new electric aircrafts. I wonder if they're really quiet as well. Because these ones certainly aren't. And this is one of the complaints, actually, about having the domestic airport so close to downtown is you have these big uh, flights right over, low over, you know, offices and homes and schools all the time. So I have no idea if electric planes are, are quieter. But, uh, yeah, this is essentially to showcase the future of electric air travel, which hopefully can help us improve um, our reliance on fossil fuels and... Uh, the impact that aviation has on climate change. Um, so it's really positive. So that's a piece of good news to end on. Um, this has been a, a very travel heavy uh, 
Reykjavik newscast. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget, of course, that our uh, cosmetic sale is going on. Like I said, I hope to bring some of it to show you for next episode. And if you like this, please share it. Please like, please subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll be back in your feed with some more news on Thursday.